Hello and welcome to the Bionicle Inspiration Series with your host Ben Cossey. I am the aforementioned Ben Cossey. And today we're going to be talking all about the 2006 Island of Doom Bionicle collab. We're going to be rounding it off in this episode. It's been a bit of a, a longer form version of this episode. This is a uh, collaborative build with a whole bunch of different very talented builders who've all come together to build essentially every single set from the 2006 wave of Bionicle sets and they've revamped it in their own beautiful, beautiful image. Uh, so we're going to specifically be talking about uh, what was left in the collab, which was all the Matoran and a few more Titans. So uh, if you're looking to build some Titans, you're looking to build some Matorans, we've got some ideas for you today. This is also an early morning recording for me, so if I have a little bit of morning voice, a little bit more uh, uh, silky smooth as I've woken up, that's why. Or it's not really that different. I don't know. It might be. It might not be. We'll find out. But hey, that's what that is. Anyway. Let's begin. So, the first uh, mock we'll be talking about today is a titan. So we'll, we'll, we'll intersperse some of those titans. We'll have one at the start, one at the end, one in the middle, all that sort of stuff. The first one is by Dylan Meaves, and this is Urnak the Nightmare. So, this original set here was a combo model of, um, what was it, Vizon, Thok, and Redak, I believe. Yeah, I think so. No, not Redak. The, the, um, the... Ah, oh, names. It's early, guys. Ah, oh, jeez. Uh, no. Uh, no, 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 I'm right, I'm right. Yeah, Vizok, Thok, and Redak. The blue, white, and black Paraka. There we go. Okay, everything's fine. I don't know why you guys were worried. We got it correct. Anyway, so yes, it was a combo model of the three. And they actually released it as an official set. And they decided to also put a gold spine with the set, which was essentially Thok's gold, um, white Paraka spine piece with the mask and the spine and all that jazz. But it was in gold, which is very beautiful. And uh, it was a great little set, and I think it was actually a pretty solid combo model. But of course, one of the things with, you know, not every combo model, but a good amount of them, is the fact that you only use the pieces that come in the sets to make something else. And while that's great, it can also be a little bit limiting because there are elements of you only can use these certain pieces and maybe if you had access to other stuff, you could probably do certain things that you just can't with these pieces. So what I really like that Dylan has done here is that he's stayed true to the original, but he has used all plethora of different pieces and really kind of made this mock uh, more its own, made it more unique, made it more, uh, made, it, made it stand out a bit more. So something that I, I really especially like is the arm that he's done there that is almost sort of this, like, dragon head. Of course, the original one there had uh, two of those Paraka skulls with, I believe, like, a Zamosphere as well as this sort of arm weapon thing. And, of course, that was just to use some of those different skulls that were left over in the combo model. But what I like that Dylan's done here is he's made it look a little bit more sort of weapon-like, make, made it actually kind of really stand out and... Um, Make it make it make a little bit more sense. I think on the original one, there's kind of just two skulls there. Kind of almost doesn't really make sense, but here it does a bit more. Um, if I remember my Bionicle law well enough, Ernak, the guy's name, was supposed to be like Matoran, like using the Matoran language. It was supposed to mean the end of all things, and I think they kind of named him that as like some Matoran saw him and they're like, this guy's terrifying. He's the the apocalypse. Like, brah. Um, so I also kind of like the fact that Dylan has expanded on that skull arm and given him just this dragon head as a hand, because I like the fact that he is, like, nightmarish, that he is the end of all things, and he is just this conglomerate of, uh, a dragon head, this weird toxic-looking belly, this big scary dragon-like head, uh, and this almost sort of mishmash of colours that does actually work quite nicely together as he's blocked out all those colours very nicely, but... The fact that he does look like this sort of abomination, I think, is very fitting and actually quite cool, uh, and and makes a lot of sense knowing that he is this this colossal evil bad guy that the Matoran just run away from in fear. I think that's uh, really cool, and I think fits that crazy dragon arm weapon uh, surprisingly well. I, I really do enjoy that. Quickly talking about the um, the belly here, I read the comments on Flickr, so if you want to read some of those comments too, you can check the links in the description and see this mock for yourself over on Flickr and let Dylan know what you really think. Uh, but what the comment in, uh, said below was by a Mr. Obsessionist, and he said that green belly is appropriately disgusting, which is actually a compliment. Um, which is, a, I think that's a great comment, because I agree. I think the belly is appropriately disgusting, and really fits with what I said before, the fact that he is this abomination, that he is, like, kind of terrifying and gross. 
Um, the fact that Dylan has used a bunch of those Zamospheres and very nicely poured them into uh, various different windscreen pieces in that uh, sort of sickly um, trans, like neon green there. Um, I think that works so well, and it uh, it kind of gives you this taste of like th- w- whatever kind of liquid or ooze or guts or whatever is pumping around inside him, and you're like, Ugh, if you're that disgusting on the inside, you must be disgusting on the outside too, you know? Um, it's very fitting. I think it communicates a bit of character, and it also pays nice homage to the original uh, Ernak, which also had that same thing of just a bunch of atmospheres in its belly. Um, but this one looks so much more like toxic and gross. It's uh, it's really really cool. It's cool and it, it cool in a creepy way. Um, final thing I want to talk about is like the rib cage on his uh, belly there again, very sinister. And this great uh, head design here using Brutaka's mask as the sort of top of this head that kind of uh, sort of sprawls out into larger horns. Uh, and, and just the kind of curvature of the front of that face there. Like I said, a little bit more sleek, a little bit more. Um, sinister looking, a bit more kind of dragon-like in nature. It's uh, very pretty, very nice. So really nicely done and a great way of creating a more sort of sinister evil bad guy there, Mr. Dylan. Let's move on to the next mock. It's by Anthony Wilson. We'll get into some of those Matoran now. And this is a a two-for-one here. This is Dalu and Captain Guran. So obviously he's built two of them here and I think he's done a bang-up job and I love how he's really stylized them to to kind of fit with the storyline uh, of uh, this era of Bionicle, where the Matoran were kind of enslaved by the Paraka on their island of Voyanui. And so I like the fact that Dylan has made these guys look like resistance fighters, like they're rebelling against their oppressors, and they're kind of this more look, like ragtag-looking bunch here with more sort of like cobbled-together armor and weapons and things. Uh, and that may be all they've got, but they're scrappy, and they really want to, um, you know, do whatever they can to defeat the oppressors. So... I really like that. I think it's a very fitting um, aesthetic to give these guys for the storyline, but also just the idea of, like, a whole, like, Matoran rebellion where they're all just, you know, like the rebellion in Star Wars. they got all this cobbled together stuff, and they're doing the best they can with what they've got. I love that. I think that's a really, really awesome aesthetic, um, and Dylan's done it very well. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about what specifically he's done. I love that on Captain Garan here, he has this flag, which, again, I think it's very fitting, you know, raising your, your flag up high and waving it around and with your pride and rebellion in your heart. I love that. Um, but I also love the fact that he's edited this. The original one, of course, is just a very typical pirate flag with a skull and crossbones, but he's uh, gone on a little Photoshop there and edited that flag, and he's put the uh, skull there with a big, you know, cross through it. Um, of course, like, a, you know, no more Paraka, we'll put an end to the Paraka, and that's what the flag is sort of um, symbolizing there. I really, really like that, and it's very fitting, very cool. Um, somebody on Flickr put a note over it saying, no, no Paraka, instead of yo-yo Paraka, which I think that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, it's a, a fun little detail there. Uh, well, let's stick uh, to talking a little bit more about Goran. I love the fact that he has a surprising, like, pirate aesthetic, whether it's the fact he has a flag, a hook, a peg leg, and a parrot as well. I like that. But I also like what I said before, the fact that maybe while the Paraka were enslaving him, they ripped his arm and leg off, and he had to replace it with a hook and a peg leg, and he's like, you know what, I'm a pirate now, you know? There's something that does feel very, like, cobbled together and resistancy about that, but also, sure, why not, he's slightly piratey now. Cool, I like it, it's it's, it's fun and exotic. It's a fun little bird design too, Um, very enjoyable, using some of those uh, very old dragon wings from some of the very classic castle sets there for... Uh, this kind of looks like a phoenix of sorts, which actually also makes sense, because from the ashes we rise up, like, ah, resistance stuff, rebellion stuff, it works, it's on so many levels, it's great. Um, let's talk now about, uh, 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 Dalu here as well. Uh, I love the fact that they've got a little telescope there, just seems fitting, just seems cool. Again, continuing that surprising pirate aesthetic here, I like that. Um, I like the little, little, little cloth, little sort of scarf that they've got, very nice as well. Uh, overall, yeah, just a solid aesthetic. I like the leg design. They almost kind of look like robotic legs, but of course, you know, Bionicles kind of are robots, so it seems fitting, but there's something about it that seems slightly off, which I think also kind of fits with, um, Captain Garan here. It looks like those legs maybe might have come off in battle and they've had to repair them with robotic ones, uh, perhaps, or perhaps they're like enhanced legs, maybe like Iron Man style or something. I don't know. Regardless, I think it looks cool that more sort of, um, robotic geary industrial aesthetic that those uh, legs have there i think it uh yeah it looks cool and really fits with the uh the idea of these guys 
I still love the the base that these guys are standing on, the little stand here, using a whole bunch of transclear pieces for this sort of like icy looking um, frozen over water aesthetic. It's uh, very nice, very very cool, and the two of them really pop uh, standing on top of it. And you know, I always love a good little system base underneath a mock, always just rounds it off nicely. It's really really cool to see. So yeah, really awesome, really unique aesthetic, and some uh, really solid stuff that you're doing there, Anthony. Solid work. Let's move on to the next mock. It's by Matt Goldberg, and this is Baltar. So, something that I really enjoy about this is when you look at some of these original Matoran from the 2006 wave of Bionicle sets, I remember even as a kid, that was something that happened, at least for me in Australia, it might not have happened for you, but a lot of the Matoran or the Turaga sets, they just didn't come to Australia, or if they did, I never saw them. Um, and yeah, like maybe like one store had them exclusively and I just didn't go or something, but I don't know. I remember looking as a kid, and I just never saw them. But I remember in 2006, the Matoran sets did come out, and I was like, cool, I actually can finally like buy these, because I would have bought those other ones, I just never appeared. Um, and I remember looking at these 2006 Matoran and being like, I'm not that excited by them. You know, they don't have unique masks, they're just rehashed masks from the Metro Wave. And they're kind of overall body design, and their arms and stuff, they're fairly simplistic. They don't really have anything like majorly exciting about them that grabbed me or anything. At least that's what I thought as a kid. Even the same, like, the weapons are kind of just rehashes of, like, Rakshi weapons and stuff. It's like, well, you know, yeah. Or not always Rakshi weapons, and different different weapons from different things. But again, it's it, it felt like a lot of rehash stuff, which yeah, it wasn't the end of the world. But I remember just not being that excited by it as a, as a result. I was like, I was hoping these guys would have more, like, uniquely colored masks or whatever. Um, and, you know, that is what it is. But I like what Matt's done here in terms of... You know, some of the more prefab elements, like the arms and stuff that were used on the original guys. Matt has kind of translated that into a more kind of modern context by giving him very stereotypical um, CCBS uh, armor and bones, which is a little bit more, I guess you could say, prefab. You know, it is how the sets would have looked. It's how a lot of sets did look. They just had that very simple design. And so I like that he's kind of translated the fact that the original sets were a little bit more simplistic and still made it more simplistic, but uh, done it through more um, CCBS-related elements. I like that. It's just a way of kind of updating it, but still having it be fairly similar to how the original set was. So I like that. It, it's made it kind of honor the original, but but feel like brand new and, and different as well. And some subtle changes to the color scheme as well. I think it's very fitting. So I, I just really like that. As a, as a, It's a great way to revamp it, I think, for sure. I also like his weapons here, the fact that he's using those Praetorian Guard blade pieces there that came on the Star Wars Ultra build Praetorian Guard from The, the Last Jedi. Uh, fantastic way of using those weapons. Again, just a nice way to update the weapons, like I said before. They were kind of samey-samey before, but now they feel nice and new, and it's cool. And uh, I don't know the way he's holding them there, and just the, the look of those blades looks uh, pretty cool, pretty unique. Let's also look at the head design here. If you look inside, uh, underneath the mask... He appears to have one of those visors from the Brain Attack wave of uh, Hero Factory sets. And I can't for the life of me figure out how the heck he would have put that in there. I, I don't know. I, maybe it just nicely inserts itself and it's just a pretty simple connection. But I just kind of got the impression that it wouldn't properly fit in knowing how those masks work. The fact that the connection points at the very top. Um, oh, no, it's not. It's on the, the, the middle, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I guess maybe that does work. <laughs> Alright, never mind then. I guess you can kind of just sort of insert that nicely into the mask there. You might have to put a few things to connect it properly, but um, that's nice to know. So if you've got any of those um, brain attack sets, the fact that they had those visors that went over the top of their masks to protect them from the black brain slugs, this, uh, they work pretty well on underneath Vakama's mask there. So hey, that's pretty fitting, that's pretty cool. So yeah, uh, so a little Matoran mark here, some fun little stuff going on. Let's move on to another mark by Matt Goldberg, and this is Perk... Uh, Perk... Per... Perk... Peruk, Peruk, this is Peruk, um, something like that, you know I'm bad at pronouncing names. Anyway, so Matt has built two Matoran for this little collab here, and I really like this one. The thing that I think really grabs me is these two claws, uh, I, I love what he's done, the the one claw is using um, uh, Turdux mask, he was a, an Agori, very very nice looking Agori, um, and the back of that mask had those big old like claws coming out of it. Uh, and so I think it's a great idea to use those as a um, as some sort of, yeah, a little claw kind of finger design. But then the other mask there also has that, but it's a little bit different. This time it's just using the very typical kind of finger design and adding some longer dark green claws onto it, which is great. 
Um, and I love the fact that they look very similar. In fact, when I first saw this, I didn't even realize they were different. Then when I started to study it, I'm like, oh, he's done a sort of asymmetrical claw design there, which I like for two reasons. One, it works. Those two pieces look fairly similar, so it's nice to see the, to, the two of them kind of complementing each other nicely. But I also like the idea that maybe Matt saw Tardix mask and was like, oh, I'd love to use that for like a hand design on a mock, but I've only got one. And so instead of being like, oh, I'll just go on Bricklink and buy one or whatever, he's like, well, no, what can I do with the pieces I currently have? And then found pieces that look fairly similar and managed to put the two next to each other. And hey, it worked, you know? I think that can be a really fun thing about mocking is like, yes, there's one solution you could do, but maybe it's a bit more expensive. Well, what sort of solution can you do that still works, still looks nice, but that way you don't have to buy brand new pieces or wait for a Bricklink order to arrive or whatever. No, instead you can still make it work with what you've got. And uh, hey, that may not be the story behind this. He might have just been like, oh, I thought the pieces looked nice together, so I did it. Uh, but I still think that's a, a nice little lesson in that anyway, is that, hey, you know, you, you work with what you've got, even if it isn't, uh, you know, the exact right thing you were hoping for. Uh, it could still work really well, like we see here. So, yeah, I love that. I also like the belly design here. He's using some sort of interesting ratchet joint, which I believe is this piece from Boga the Varactyl from the General Grievous wheel bike chase from episode uh, three, that, that range of um, Lego Star Wars sets. Uh, works pretty well as just, uh, well, well, one, to get a bit of waist uh, posability there, but two, it just works well to create that uh, general torso design there for this Matoran in here. So really like that, really solid way of doing it. And also the Rakshi heads there as little shoulder pads, they work well. The Rakshi pieces, I think, always are a pretty solid choice to uh, to just add a, add a nice bit of um, really organic looking uh, armor on any kind of mock. So yeah, really solid work there. So love your work, Matt. Let's move on now to another Titan. Uh, this is Botar by Ea Okanonen. So, I thoroughly enjoy this. Botar was a combo model of Brutaka and Axon. I believe it was just the two of them. Uh, and they formed this pretty awesome canon Bionicle character. Um, one thing that I love about this is that, yeah, he has tidied it up a little bit. And, you know, maybe uh, changed up some of the proportions. The original one had a, a much larger mouth, whereas this one here is a little bit smaller. Um... But uh, yeah, AO's really um, taken a lot of the original concepts on that combo model and just sort of refined them, very similar to Ernarak like we saw before, uh, just really made it look more holistic, really taken it away from being a, a, a combo model and um, just made it its own very unique thing. And I really enjoy that. So let's talk about some of the specific techniques that he's done here, which uh, I think uh, look very schmick. Uh, the general kind of waist design here, using a bunch of these smaller chain pieces to form this sort of like waist cloth. It looks really nice. Of course, that would sway around a little bit, knowing how those chains work. So yeah, if you're playing around with it, moving it around, it could have some more you know, dynamic wind-blowing action or something like that. I also like the waist design, the fact that those uh, gold clip pieces kind of form this like ab but also the fact that we see that exact same texture on the arms there and, and a few other places as well. So... That way it, it, it looks a little bit more like uh, scales on like armor or something, you know, or just sort of like metal plating perhaps. So I like that that does give you this more armored texture, but it also forms abs and makes them look ripped and super strong. So that's pretty cool. So I like how he's refined this color scheme here. You know, there were a lot of colors on the original Botor here, but he's um he's really kind of uh, you know layered them in some uh, pretty solid ways and has made it look quite clean, quite nice. Uh, I'm surprised that this gold, silver, black, dark red, dark blue, uh, and that's kind of pretty much it. I'm surprised that it all just beautifully flows one into the other there. It uh, really, really works. I also like the kind of Anubis, almost like bat-like design of uh, of Botor here. How he's, he's changed it up a little bit, but like giving him this tail and these uh, almost sort of yeah, dog-like ears there, or bat-like ears. I can kind of see a bit of both. Um, yeah, just, it, I don't know, it gives Botor this kind of very awesome looking personality, I think. Um, he he almost looks like a different character, but, you know, y you can so easily see the resemblance to the original source material as well. There's uh, something really nice about that. I also really, really enjoy his weapon here, this almost sort of like shield, but also kind of like an axe as well. I don't know. It looks like a weapon that I think he could very effectively use and seems quite fitting for the character. So that's nice. But also those big claws look like they'd be solid weapons as well. So yeah, I like that. Final little thing that, uh, it's, it's, it's just a small thing, but I like it. The, um, the knee pads here using those skull spider masks. Um, those skull spider masks are pretty helpful. The fact that you can just sort of slot them in nicely to a bunch of different pieces. 
um, it works works pretty well. So hey, if you're looking for a nice knee pad design, you got one here on Botol. So solid, solid work. Uh, really nice to see this character get revamped because uh, it's not really something you see every day, you know? And he's done a fantastic job. So love your work. Let's move on to Mitch Henry. This is uh, Kazi. Not Kossi. Kazi. Uh, so Mitch, uh, Mitch actually messaged me and he said he wanted me to specifically focus on this. I'm really glad he did because uh, I was kind of seeing this myself on this mock, but he's put it in good words. So I'll just, I'll just quote what Mitch said. He said that he wanted to go for something really over the top that nobody could take seriously when he was building this guy. He said that he thinks that the original set was just kind of a little bit um, pathetic. Those were Mitch's words. He said, uh, yes, he thought the original set was really pathetic, so he wanted uh, to do something that went uh, a little bit too far in the opposite direction. And I like that, because I, I kind of touched upon it before. Like I said, a lot of those Matoran designs didn't excite me as a kid. And even now, like, they are, they are pretty well designed, but they're nothing, like, extraordinary necessarily. And uh, I, yeah, I love the idea of going, like, okay, let's take this more sort of average-looking set and really, really make it cool. And I also love the fact that Mitch is like, you know what, I'm not going to make him a Matoran, I'm not going to make him small, I'm actually going to almost make him like Toa size here. I love that, because sure, Matoran are always meant to be smaller, that's just, you know, that's just how they worked in the law. But why? Why not make them a little bit larger? There's no reason that you can't, you know, sure you could say there's some rules that state that you have to, but maybe you want to play with scale a little bit, maybe you want to actually make them a little bit taller, why not? Mitch, I think, did a fantastic job of it. Um, so yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea to do that, to, to, to build them into a little bit larger, but also to, you know, do like Mitch has done here, give him a more sort of, uh, slim sort of mechanical looking waist, big, really sturdy thighs, uh, and this, uh, much larger weapon. And I, I love the way he's holding it too. I think that's, uh, uh, I always think it's really good to pay attention to the posing whenever you're, you're building a mock there, because, um, I think you can always say a lot, you know, what Mitch said about really wanting to make him very over the top. It looks like almost that he's like, I don't know, he, he seems like some guy who's, like, gone to the gym, and he's getting the big old, big old weights, and he's kind of just got them around his shoulder, and he's just like, yeah, okay, I bench press, like, a whole bunch, I come here, like, three times a day, like, I'm, I'm, I'm ripped, I know, you know, I don't know, he seems a little bit kind of cocky, almost, um, and I love that that's all just being communicated by the fact that he's just sort of slung his, his big old stuff over his shoulders, and just the way he's kind of holding it there, um, I think it's really, really cool. Uh, I also like the fact that he's given them those sort of digigrade leg design there, which I would say more typically you see on sort of more sinister looking mocks. But of course, this is just uh, just a little bit touring guy. He ain't doing anything bad, you know. But um, I love the fact that Mitch is deliberately uh, really doing out there stuff, really different stuff, giving him a more obscure leg design, a more obscure waist design, this big old weird stuff. Um, it's uh, very fitting and very cool. So I love that idea, you know. If you are revamping something that is a little bit more kind of stock standard or boring, why not just lean into that and um, really do the opposite? I think that's a, a fantastic way of approaching a mock. So yeah, really, really solid work there, Mitch. Um, I spoke about those big, big thighs before. I love the idea of using those Rakshi uh, foot pieces there as uh, as um, uh, to, to, to illustrate the thigh design there. Uh, they work quite well. I spoke about those Rakshi heads before on Matt's mock. And um, I think all those Rakshi pieces uh, quite often work super well at creating very very like realistic looking um uh, anatomy you know they work well as thighs there i've seen the the uh, rakshi spine pieces also looking very good as like thigh armor rakshi heads work for a whole variety of different reasons whether it's a head a shoulder a part of like abs or part of a leg or whatever um they're just great pieces to use so certainly something to think about if you want to uh really effectively um well one create an upper leg design or two just uh, create very realistic looking human proportions in some fashion so yeah and that's awesome and this is really well built and i love the concepts you're playing with here so love your work let's move on to another mark here this is by Paturan, and this is velika so velika interesting guy whose name i'm probably mispronouncing he's a cool dude uh, I love what uh, Paturan here has done with the weapon. Just uh, The original one just had those sort of, uh, what are they, when were little diggy pieces there, but I like that he's kind of put it on this larger staff. I'm just kind of imagining him actually physically digging with that. <laughs> I don't know, just almost this little, like, uh, like like a little rowboat with like oars or whatever just like <laughs> as he um you know digs on one side digs on the other this almost sort of fluid flowing motion as he digs around uh, i don't know it's just a fun little mental image for me i i like it when you see a good weapon and you can immediately see like how they would probably use it i think that's pretty cool i still like his more sort of broad-shouldered look there using some of those um onwa masks 
I don't know, just kind of the way that he's a little bit more sort of hunched over, a little bit more kind of scout in that regard. Uh, I feel like that really lends itself to a Tower of Stone. It looks like, you know, he's really, really kind of worked some of those muscles and he's a little bit more, um, I don't know, just a little bit, a little bit stronger in that regard. I think that uh, it gives him a more distinct, uh, very fitting look that I, I think kind of fits his element as well to some degree. And also I like the fact that he is a little bit more hunched. He, he kind of looks like he's someone who maybe keeps to himself. At least that's the way I see it. And I think it's also very fitting for this specific character, because those of you who are a little bit more steeped in the lore of Bionicle, you know who this is. So let me read the Bionicle wiki over to Buddy Biosector we go. Uh, so, Velkia. This is uh, well, the very first few sentences of Velkia on Biosector. It says, I suppose it would be Vel... Vel... Velika, wouldn't it? Velika! Velika is a pseudonym of a great being who transferred his consciousness into a Pomatoran body to observe the functioning of the Matoran universe. On Voyanui, he was known as an eccentric and inventive member of the Voyanui resistance team. Since the restoration of Spirus Magna, Velika has put into motion a plan to rule Spirus Magna, which necessitates the murder of several powerful Matoran universe entities. Velika is a psychopath evil killer man <laughs> i remember ages ago that it came out that um greg was like hey by the way a pre-existing character is secretly an evil great being figure out who it is and everyone was like what what and eventually it came out and they're like yeah this random matoran and i love the fact that the cutest most innocent looking one is secretly plotting everyone's evil demise so um i like that you can kind of almost see that on the editing too there's all that sort of weird like translucent red stuff at the back and um uh, I, I assume Butloaf did it. He kind of edited that kind of red mist coming out of it. It's like, what is what is that? That looks terrifying. Um, so I like that. The fact that, uh, you know, he's got his evil eyes. He's got that coming out of his back. You can tell something's up with this guy. Don't trust him. Um, so I like that. I like that. I just like the idea that this completely innocent looking character is secretly uh, a bad guy, you know? So I like that. I like that a lot. Um, so yes, a very unique character and a very important character, surprisingly, in the Bionicle lore there. So we go from one bad guy to a good guy. It's Good Guy by Cody Avery. So this, this character has quite the legacy. There's a lot of memes, a lot of, a lot of love for this guy. Uh, and Cody has revamped him in, I think, very suitable fashion. One thing I like is, is the original set there, of course, was a, a, lot, a much more sort of simplistic build. Uh, much like a lot of the other Matoran, of course. But uh, he was fun. He was excited. Look at, him, look at him with his arms as he's cheering there. But what I like that Cody's done is uh, he's really kind of tidied him up a lot and really really kind of focused on the specific textures and aesthetic of the blank metru head there and extended that out into the rest of the body. So the arms, of course, are still a lot more um, sort of slim and uh, minimal, but there's a lot more of a sort of very smooth kind of agile texture to them now. Or he's used that very clever boat stud technique to get that little kind of knee pad design. And again, it just matches the kind of angles and texture of that metru head. And, you know, there's a few more areas that do look a little bit more kind of robotic and um, detail-y, which I think kind of the general mouth area of that Metru head also does. So I think it's a really cool challenge of doing that. And I think Cody's nailed it where he's he's taken kind of almost sort of one piece, that head design there, and made everything kind of perfectly flow around it. At least that's the way I look at it. And I think he's done a bang up job of that, of um, really paying homage to the original, but uh, really making it work with a lot more sort of sophisticated techniques as well, and really paying attention to your textures, and um, it, it's a great job. I love how he's done the arm design here, using some of these dark red engine pieces like this, just the way they kind of very neatly uh, sort of wrap around the arm there, and it, it gives it this uh, very sort of, again, professional, clean-looking look. It's uh, very nice. And I also love how he's used Partu's boomerang piece like this, uh, as a, a weapon which looks surprisingly similar to the original weapon he had but again is uh, making it new making it updated making it unique uh, and I love that so it's always great to see more sort of modern pieces being used with uh, more old style bionicle stuff I think that's great so hey look I think this is a great way of revamping good guy uh, and I love what he's done with the textures and just really kind of cleaning this guy up and making him look um, more surprisingly kind of sleek and agile and, 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 and pretty I could say I think I will. He's a little bit pretty. So there you go. Good job on good guy. Let's move on to the final mock now. This is by Brick Brickelson, and this is Umbra, the Darkest Light. So Umbra, um, well, I'll read the little quote here that's on Flickr. I am Umbra. I guard the mask of life. You shall not pass. Man, a few words, Umbra, but powerful words. 
um, fitting, I think. And I think that uh, Brick Brickelson here has really um, kind of expanded upon that in some really nice ways. Let me elaborate. So the original Umber, of course, had that really, really awesome like rollerblade style foot design where he actually had some tires and he could sort of zoom, zoom around. And I love that uh, Mr. Brick Brickelson here has kind of times that by 100. You know, he's still given him that rollerblade design, but it almost looks like some sort of crazy industrial machine now giving him multiple different wheels, these very large sort of, uh, yeah, light bluish gray mechanical looking, uh, not even shoes, like they go all the way up to the knee, essentially. Um, I, I love, I love that he's really expanded upon that, you know, and he's taken the weapon and he's made it look like this, uh, uh, it almost looks like that could kind of spin around like an Inquisitor blade from Star Wars or something. And he's given him this sort of shadowy wisps coming out of his back as well. He's taken a lot of the the general lore or the the, the, the really cool specific um, techniques uh, that were in the original set and really expanded upon them. And I love that because this guy is meant to be the guardian of or one of the guardians of the Mask of Life. And he's meant to obviously look a little bit imposing, a little bit menacing. And just looking at him, he looks imposing and menacing. Big, crazy looking weapon using some wire pieces there to give it the um, sort of energy flowing through it crazy shadow wisps coming out of his back and big crazy looking wheel leg things i can imagine being a toa naika walking up to this guy and just being like uh oh i don't know how the heck i'm gonna beat this dude because you'd see those crazy wheel leg things you'd be like what the heck do those things do they probably go super fast you see these shadows you see this big crazy weapon he's just intimidating to look at and i think that's perfect for a, uh, a guardian of something you know you don't even need to fight them you can just walk away and be like thank you i'm not gonna fight you you're terrifying you know so I love that. I love that he's um, really capitalized on that. I think it's very fitting for the general idea of this character. I also really love what he's done with this weapon here. I briefly touched upon it before. Of course, the original one used some older recycled Anika blades. Uh, and it's nice to see it being kind of reimagined, like I said, using those wire pieces, changing it up a bit, making it look like it almost spins instead of being this sort of two-handed like quarterstaff. This time it is uh, a very unique and different weapon that I imagine also could be used as a shield if he spins it fast enough, you know? So, um, really cool way of reimagining that weapon. I also love the inclusion of the yellow highlights. There's not a lot, but just the way that they are stylized, this sort of big sort of flowing shoulder armor, these horns at the top of his head. It almost looks like a crown or sort of more like ornate armor, perhaps, like he's sort of been gifted this privilege of uh, looking after the Mask of Life. Um, I really, really do like that. I think it, it gives him this surprisingly regal look. Because if I'm not mistaken, Umbra was actually a good guy. But it's like, hey, this is my mission. Even if you are Toa, even if you are on my side, uh, sorry, I'm going to have to fight you. Um, so I like the fact that he does have that more kind of regal look to him. Because it does make him look slightly good. But it is also the fact that it's like, I'm, I, am, I am still menacing and I am still going to hurt you if, you if you get in my way, you know? Let me double check. Was Yeah, he was a part of the Order of Madanui. He wasn't essentially a good guy. So I like the fact that he he, uh, he looks sinister. He looks evil. But there are elements of him too that do look uh, nice, good, and respectful, one could say. So really, really solid work. I love what you've done with Umbra here. He was always one of my favorite sets. So it's really nice to see him getting a bit of love in a revamp here. Solid work. Love your work. All right, that's it. That's it, we're done. That's it for this collab. We've covered all the mocks now, and if I missed any, oops, please someone let me know. Um, as the rules are, if you have a collab of your own, please do contact me. Let me know, and I will happily cover it in a Bionicle Inspiration Series episode. There was this really cool Barra Magna one, and no one contacted me about that, and that's fine, but I'm probably going to be covering that soon, because I love me and my Barra Magna, and those mocks in that collab look really cool. So you can stay tuned for that soon, but I'll go back to some of the regu regular scheduled programming. Uh, and do just your normal typical episodes. I might, might take a quick break from some collabs, but you can expect those soon for sure. But so yeah, if you've got your own, let me know and I'll cover it. Speaking of letting me know if you have stuff, there's a submission email. And if you want to submit some of your own mocks to the Binacle Inspiration series, that is the place to do it. The email is currently on your screen right now. It doesn't matter what you submit. It doesn't matter when you submit it. It doesn't matter what you put in the email. Put as much or as little as you want. Send it my way, and we're good to go. Eventually, I'll put it in an episode when I can. But i got a lot of submissions to work through, so your patience is key. Additionally, there's links in the description to the mocks you saw in this episode, so please do check that stuff out. Maybe go comment on some of the builders that you saw today. Head over to their Flickers. Head over to their Instagrams. Let them know what you think of their mocks. Let them know you like what they do. They're good builders, and I couldn't do these episodes without them. So giving them a bit of love, 
would be highly appreciated. Additionally, there's links in the description below to some of my own social media, so you can check out some of the things that I got going on over there. And additionally, there's links to my Patreon as well. If you're interested in becoming a member on Patreon, you'll get access to my private Discord server and some personalized podcasts, behind the scenes content, all sort of stuff. There's a lot of bonus things there that you can enjoy if you're a fan of my stuff. All right, that's it. Thank you very much for listening. Peace out, Girl Scouts. I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Happy building.